21 EMA still holding very strong. Um, as long as this 21 EMA is holding this orange uh, moving average right here, we will continue to move sideways. Um, in order to get continuation to the upside, we would need to start closing dailies above this yellow EMA, which is the um, 8 EMA on the daily. So as long as we're uh, below the 8 and getting supported by the 21, we will continue sideways. Once we break below that 21, we would head down to the 34, most likely get daily support on the 34. So the downside target is looking around 50,000, and that's still in the cards, especially as long as things are going the way they're going with the Federal Reserve. Most likely, the way that this will shake out is the Federal Reserve is going to discuss a concept called yield curve control. Yield curve control will be to keep the bond market at ease because right now the bonds are pumping. And uh, yeah, it's just a really shaky environment for the traditional markets. And this is going to make crypto kind of, you know, we'll just have to see how it plays out. But anyways, um, one thing that I'm seeing with the fibs is just a classic movement that we keep seeing again. So I'm going to go to the previous high of 42,000. Um, that movement that we got where, you know, the bull market really started getting exciting and I'm bringing it down to the swing low. Let me adjust this all to the left. Okay. And then I'm going to do another one right here. And then I'm going to do one more on the current movement just to give you guys an idea of what I'm seeing. And then I'm going to move on to the point of this video. Okay, so what we're seeing right here is this extension down to this extension and quickly we're getting a um, rejection on the 786. This is a very volatile dead cap bounce. So typically in Forex, the dead cap bounce moves up to the 0.5 fib and uh, that would be the more classic dead cap bounce. So essentially what happens is you move down. I guess technically if you want, you could pull it right here as the first move in order to get the earliest projection of the outcome, but you could still see it's the 786. So you come up to the 0.5, you get rejected, and then you have a new lower low. Okay, that's exactly what happened in this fractal, but because Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies are a lot more volatile, you can stretch out the rule for the dead cap bounce all the way up to the 786. Okay, so then you have the same thing going on right here. You have the one spot down to the um, swing low, and then you see we have a, a downward swing, we come up, get rejected, uh, and then we have the uh, bounce back. But this time it was really awkward because we just made a, a basically a higher low. And with that higher low, we exuberantly moved up. And um, again, these markets are really unpredictable. The only way you could really tell what would happen is if you start looking into numerology and gematria. And that's what this channel is all about. So just to give an understanding of what we can see here, we have a new FIB drawn from the current all-time high around 61,800, pulled down to the uh, 52,985 where we bounced on the 21 EMA. And then we came back up and then basically touched the 0.5 last night. So this looks like a classic dead cap bounce. And what I'm anticipating is a pullback down to that 50K region, 51,000. And then we keep it moving. The big reason for that is because that would be down near the 34 EMA, if I remember correctly. Let me pull up my indicators. Yep. So you can see right here this uh, red line, the 34 EMA. We're most likely going to get down there. Again, we could always have a, a sharp wick down to the point of control in the VPVR, but most likely we're going to uh, maintain a new higher low. So it's, it's okay. It's just more higher lows. That's most likely what I see uh, in the cards between now and March 22nd. Now, in previous videos, I was mentioning March 22nd, and everyone's like grilling me about it. And it, I, I wasn't saying that we're going to hit like new all-time highs on the 22nd, all right? I, I've been saying for a while, expect the new highs to happen in the first week of April. So the fact that we moved up this quick, that fast, especially on a weekend, I was warning everyone, once CME opens, you're going to have a dump. It's just the way it works. These institutional investors, they love shaking out the market. That's their job. Their job is to take your money. So um, let's quickly get into XRP because XRP looks like it's doing pretty well today. I'm 
Sorry about that. So we're a day away from my main breakout target I've been talking about. It's pretty exciting stuff. Um, again, we saw a nice bounce at the bottom of this trend line. We are now exiting the uh, handle of the cup and handle. I went over this early for my private mastermind group. And I was discussing that, you know, I'm anticipating a move up to the top of this, perhaps another rejection. And we basically saw it within like a fraction of a penny uh, yesterday. So now I believe, you know, we're going to have the same uh, outcome as long as Bitcoin continues sideways. That's going to allow XRP to move up. If you ever notice the most volatile uh, days for XRP are the days where Bitcoin is flat. So keep that in mind. Um, I went over technical analysis in uh, a couple of the altcoins yesterday, uh, but today, I mean, it's pretty awesome. Link is up 10%. Whenever you see Bitcoin like making this move and then you have the Bitcoin dominance uh, down almost a full percent, you could pretty much expect some of these alts to, to pump. So I don't want to get too much in te technical analysis. I just wanted to give a brief, um, you know, speedy roundup of what's been going on over the last 24 hours. And I wanted to get into the topic of this video, which is comparing the dot-com bubble crash to um, the 2018 crypto crash and another um, set of dates that I thought were pretty interesting. So today will be more numerology and then we'll end it up with some gematria. Okay, so here we have a list of all the market crashes and we have the dot-com bubble crash, which was coincidentally in March, right? And we saw that March crash happen uh, last year on this date. So we're coming up on the 21st anniversary of the dot-com. Well, we've already surpassed the 21st anniversary of the dot-com bubble crash. And remember, 21 is important because 21 is, you know, Jesuit. And we've been touching on the Jesuits, the Catholics, the Vatican, the city of London, Washington, D.C., and how this is all tied into the controllers down through the world language, the world military, and the world economy. So what I did was I started playing around with some of these dates because I was pretty interested. So I took the dot-com bubble crash date, and then I also took what they're calling the 2018 cryptocurrency crash, which, again, this is not correct at all. Like, I'll just show you this date plugged in, though, and why I think it's pretty interesting. So you have 20th of September in 2018. Okay, so these are the dates we have right here. We have 3-10-2000 for the dot-com bubble crash and 9-20-2018 for the quote-unquote cryptocurrency crash. And the first thing that stands out to me is this, 222 months, okay? And what's funny is whenever I think of 222, I think of World Economic Forum. Okay, we're getting the 222. And um, it's just so interesting how the world economy is all tied to this from everything in the dot-com bubble crash through all those tech stocks that lost like 90% of their value, one of which that lost 90% of their value was Amazon. And all my private clients know that I call the 2017 crash where Bitcoin went from 20,000 down to a bottom of around 3,100. When it made that move, I call that the dot-com bubble crash of cryptocurrency. And the reason why is because if you bought at the bottom of that crash, you're, you're a genius. If you were somebody who bought that bottom, because now if you look at Amazon back then in the 2001 um, charts all the way till today, you made one of the greatest investments of all time. OK, so I don't think in my personal opinion and my outlook on the New World Order, the fourth industrial revolution, how all of this is going to shake out with cryptocurrencies, digital currencies being part of the new financial system. I do not see an 80 percent correction ever happening again in Bitcoin. It could totally happen for all of those other altcoins, um, but I do not believe it will ever happen again. This was the last time. And again, people always say, oh, well, it's happened every single time, you know, but you people need to understand this is a different time right now. We are entering the age of we are in the age of Aquarius. Everything is different now. So if you're not conscious to all this stuff, you know, maybe you need to um, watch some of my other videos or you need to become a little bit more um, up to date on what's going on with the quantum financial system and economics in general. But for the most part. Um, 
let's just go ahead and say that this transition that we've seen since the COVID-19 crash was moving us into what, what is known as UN Agenda 2030, United Nations Agenda 2030. In, in the works of Agenda 21, if you don't know about those two things, please Google them and do your own research. Okay, so another thing I did for fun was I went ahead and I typed in from this dot-com bubble crash to June 10th, 2018. So we got 6, 10, 2018. And what I'm getting is, oh, sorry. We calculated that. Right. Sorry about that. So June 9th, 2018. So we're getting 6,666 days. And just for fun, I went to the Bitcoin chart and I went back all the way to that uh, around that time. And I was just sort of interested in what was going on. Sometimes these dates are a little bit too obvious. <clears throat> Excuse me. So let's see, June... I did this uh, all pretty pretty quick. Oh yeah, so I was I was looking into this June tenth date, and I thought it was really interesting how right around the time of six thousand six hundred sixty six days, that the Bitcoin price on this date had a massive drop of ten percent in a single day, and the price hit a six thousand six hundred sixty six dollar Bitcoin on the wick on that date. And it's just crazy because there's this like Bart Simpson pattern that's forming and obviously like a head and shoulders, which led to a continuation to the downside. But I thought that was just a little interesting thing. So don't want to get into that too deep, but I do want to get into some of these numbers that I'm seeing. So right here, we have 18 years and three months, and that would be 18 plus three equals 21 and then down here you have 219 months with 2 plus 1 plus 9 equals 12. So now you're reversed 21. And then 6 plus 6 plus 6 plus 6 equals 24. And again, the 24 and the 42 with the connection to Jesuit. And I've heard a lot of people saying like, you can't flip the numbers and do that. Come on, you could do this all day. You know, like these connections are insane right? So you have Rome with the 24 and the 21 connection back to Jesuit, okay? Which is a, the basis of all of this stuff. Stuff is really interesting. You have 25 in Roma, which is the way you would say it in, in, a, in Italian, 25 coming back to Pope and some other things, but we'll get back to that a little bit later. The one thing I wanted to mention, though, was the Agenda 2030, right? The UN Agenda 2030, and how I thought that that was really, um, how that was really interesting. And one more other thing was this date of June, um, yeah, what was it, June 10th that I was working with? So June 10th, 2018, being 6 plus 10 plus 20 plus 18 equaling 54 and the 54 comes back to Jesuit order and also Catholics who are helping run this entire system. So whenever I see that 54 number in, in the numerology or in the gematria, I always bring it back to those two things because those are the main entities that are controlling the financial system. Okay, so that UN Agenda 2030 and how it has a... Let me actually copy and paste this and do a restart just so I could have a clean starting point. So we have UN Agenda 2030, and then you have Bitcoin, right? So I had someone yesterday commenting, talking about how, like, uh, it sounds like what I'm saying about all of this stuff and how it's connected is, is the New World Order, like, and how we should join their team. I've never said that, and 
I'm actually exposing all of that. Like people need to understand that I don't care about these cryptos like from an emotional perspective. Like you don't want to get like married, you know? You don't want to get married to these things. It just messes you up, right? You got the 72 and the 45, 45, 72 in Bitcoin. Don't get married. You got the 144 for... Right, you got the 144, so and the 72, and marriage and Bitcoin. You don't want to get married to them, okay? I try to help people like understand that that this isn't what it's about. I'm trying to help you understand that these are being manipulated and they're all being controlled by the same people who print money, the same people who operate the fiat system, the Federal Reserve system, or the same people who operate cryptocurrency. That's what this whole channel is about, exposing that. So let's get back to a, a UN Agenda 2030 and the direct correlation to Bitcoin because this is what it's telling you ahead of time, that there's going to be a connection between the cryptocurrencies and the new world that COVID-19 has pushed us into, okay? And what started the noticeable uh, trend towards UN Agenda 2030? It was Event 201. So if you don't know about Event 201... You're going to need to do some research on that. And what are some matches we have in, in event 201? We have 72 with Bitcoin and we have the 24, all right? 24 coming back to Rome, uh, 42 coming back to Jesuit, and then you have 72 coming back to money through, which is super important because money was reset. Once the event 201 has told us the plan of COVID-19, the pandemic caused the reset, and that reset reset the entire financial system to move us into what would be called the quantum financial system, which is a huge part of UN Agenda 2030. Money, Bitcoin, and UN Agenda 2030, all 72s, okay? So where else do we see this event 201? Or sorry, where else do we see the 201? So we have the Jesuit order with the 201. Again, connection with the 69, 69, 69, 201 in event 201. And then also we have the Catholics, okay? The Catholics with 201 and 51, which comes back to moon, and again, these people worship the sun and the moon, okay? And anyone that's saying uh, you can't use the word the in front of it, that make, that's ridiculous. What is the, right? The equals L, and L is God. So L, 17, and then you type in UN Agenda 2030 into Google, and what do you get right here? Number 17, huh? The Sustainable Development Goals or Global Goals are a collection of 17 interlinked global goals. The blueprint to achieve a better and more sustainable future for all. Oh, thank you. Thanks for that. We really needed your help, guys. 17, okay? And the, written in English, with the 33. And the 15, which comes back to moon. Okay, but the 33 is really important. It's one of the first things I go over in my Gamatria series because 33 equals the 33rd degree, which is when ice turns back into water, when a solid state moves back into liquid, and then you have the ego death, you become the reborn, and that is why Jesus Christ died at the age of 33, yada, yada, yada. So I'll do more of a breakdown on that uh, for those who are newer to the channel, but please go back and watch the other videos so you can see. So another place that I'm seeing 201 is in this guy. Okay, Jorge Mario Bergoglio. And remember, I made a video a couple of videos ago discussing this guy, and I wanted to do a deeper, uh, a deep dive into him. He is the Pope, okay? 
So again, we have 201. We have 201 in the Jesuit order. We have 201 in the Catholics. We have 201 in Jorge Mario Bergoglio. We have Event 201, which started this whole show. They told us ahead of time what would be happening. His name is really special because you also have the 105 reduced down to 15. You have the 111. I mean, it's, it's a crazy name. So um, this whole connection here comes back to a huge idea. Um, and again, let me let me touch a little bit on the Pope because I think this guy's pretty interesting. So I was I just typed in Pope Francis, and uh, one thing that I thought was interesting was. Uh, this first question, does the Pope get a salary and his monthly pension is 2,500 euros, right? Okay, so we have Pope 25. And remember my video yesterday where I was going into the uh, 25 with the COVAX and uh, the, um, well, yeah, it was just so funny, all, the, all these two fives that you get with the Pope. Also Amazon, you get 25 as it's amazing. So uh, Pope with the $2,500 uh, and then also he, uh, when you get his salary uh, translated into US dollars, you get 30, uh, 3,300, right? For the 33. It's so amazing. It's so amazing. So let's go to this guy real quick. Oh, also it's his 84th year of age. So, uh, you know, that's something to, to look out for because 84 is the most pure cipher. And he is a Jesuit. It even says it in the first um, part of his, um, yeah, it says right here. He is the head of the Catholic Church and sovereign of the Vatican City State. Francis is the first pope to be a member of the Society of Jesus. So he's the first Jesuit pope. Classic. And look at when his papacy began on March 13, 2013, right? What happened on March 2013 last year? Sorry, uh, March 13th last year. That was the Bitcoin bottom. So they celebrate this day absolutely. Um, really classic. Oh, and another thing that I think is funny is Wikipedia always pictures, always shows you the most obvious pictures when it comes to these like freaks. Like, look at this guy. Uh, it's loading. Sorry, it's taking so long. Okay, yeah, look right here. So you see his cross is hidden inside of his jacket, right? Like, so look, when you type in Karl Marx into Wikipedia, you just see this guy just straight up with the hidden hand. They used it as his main picture. And also, this is uh, the anniversary of the day he was buried. It's pretty interesting. Um, <laughs> now I'm going to get into a little bit how all this connects, right? So you have the hidden hand, and you have the hidden cross, the first Jesuit pope. So let's a uh, little bit uh, get into a connection here that I'm making between the papacy and all the other things, right? So you have papacy, and you're getting the 62 and the 100 and the 26. And of course, these guys are running the financial system along with some other helpers. The dollar, 62, 26, 100, and then you got queen, running the city of London, right? And you have the 62 and 26. And then another thing is you have the inverse 73 and 37, right? With the dollar and with queen. And she runs the entire financial system around like the fucking planet. Like if you look Canada, New Zealand, they all like, ha yeah, it's crazy. Just look into that. Um, so another thing that's pretty interesting is socialism. And it makes me think about this guy, Karl Marx, that we were just looking at, right? So Karl Marx, socialism, and we're getting the 100 with the dollar, with the papacy, the 37, 37, and then 62, 62. So this is all showing you, right? The papacy, the city of London with the um, monarchy are running the whole world with socialism, via the fiat money currency okay it's not it's not necessarily pure money it is currency and we went over the differences between that and this is all socialism when you have a, a, a un agenda 2030 talking about the whole world having a sustainable development plan and they we don't have any say in it that's not democracy we don't get to choose they do whatever the fuck they want they run the world 
We just have to deal with it, okay? And that's how it works. Socialism is there in the in the basis of all of this. Go look into Marxism. Go watch the um, documentary Europa, The Last Battle. Go educate yourself on that stuff. It's really important. And the last thing I wanted to get into to also kind of break down the truth about crypto is this idea of what crypto actually is. And I think the easiest way to do that is to go type in crypto definition into Google. And what you get, oh, and another thing, now that I've thought about it, think about the name of Google, right? You have it ending in the L, the L for God. So remember that. Um, but anyway, so you have crypto, and the definition is a person having a secret allegiance to a political creed, especially communism. Huh. And what's communism? We've been going over this. So communism is socialism. It's the same thing. So when you type in cryptocurrencies and you type in secret society... Sorry, I made a mistake. Let me back that on up. Right, and we're getting the 174. So this match makes a lot of sense to me because throughout all of this stuff, you know, we call it Jesuit, we call it papacy, we call it monarchy, we call it president, right? We call it pope. But in reality, it's all these secret societies in the background, like the Club of Rome and Skull and Bones and all of the more esoteric versions of Freemasonry, Scottish Rite. Um, it gets deep. OTO, Ordo Temp Templo Orealis, um, black magic cults. You know, there's so much to learn through all of this. But if you just type in the word crypto, you immediately get the truth. A person having a secret allegiance to a political creed, especially communism. Because that is the ultimate goal of cryptocurrency, like I've been saying. It is not for us. It is not for freedom of people. It is for controlling the entire economy on a system that is traceable, where humans don't have any sovereignty anymore. So that's what this whole channel is about. And I really wanted to break all that down because I feel like I've been getting a lot of confusion in my work. And I want you guys to know what I'm trying to do is to give the truth so that everyone could learn that this is only going to last for a little bit longer. This cryptocurrency uh, ordeal that retail is making money hand over fist in is probably going to only last one or two more bull runs max. We probably only have till about year 2025. So I just want to let you guys know that the quantum financial system is not here just yet. They have more work to do. Go learn about Agenda 2030. Go learn about Agenda 21. Understand when they're going to be moving us into this system. Because as far as I know, the earliest dates will happen around 2022. And that was where my XRP information started to really make sense when I did the, when I did the Gamatria with XRP. So with that being said, um, I know this video is packed full of information. I hope you guys got value out of it. If you're trying to learn more about all of this stuff, I have a mastermind uh, course that I'm selling right now on sale for the end, um, till the end of this month. So it's currently on sale. If you guys are interested in that, shoot me an email in the description box. Um, and with that being said, enjoy the rest of your day in the matrix. Peace.